that trope that Israel took the Arab land. This is a complete disgusting smokescreen coming out of collectivism. Well, they're there, so it's there that is the collective's land. And now Israel is there and Israel is a collective. So one collective has pushed the other collective off of this land. That is really disgusting because there is no Arab land. Countries don't own land. They can claim to own it like our government claims to own about 95% of the land in Arizona. But there's no moral legitimacy to that. Governments cannot own property, but government does not own the country. Our country is owned by the individuals living in it, not democratically, not collectively, but individual ownership, individual private property is the only moral and actual ownership that there is. So there was no Arab land, there is no Palestinian land, and those pieces of land were paid for, they were bought. They weren't seized. Israel didn't send people in with guns to seize somebody's farm. They bought him. Owning land doesn't give you the right to launch missiles or grenades or bullets into some other people, or whether they're on your land or not on your land. You cannot murder. And even if it were their property, it wouldn't give them the right to do things to Israel, anything remotely like what they're doing. Land is only owned by an individual and nobody pushed an individual off his land. But if they had, the recompense is through court, not through slaughter. They could take them to the world court, but they have no case. There's this doctrine of the self-determination of nations, the right of self-determination of nations. Well, if that's what they want, who are we to stop them? I'll tell you who we are. We are the voice of justice, reason, individual rights. And there's no difference between Al Capone's gang terrorizing parts of Chicago and the Iranian mullahs terrorizing the whole of Iran, something that's evil and immoral when done by one gangster doesn't become moral and legitimate when done by a hundred gangsters or a thousand gangsters. Even if every single Iranian citizen voted to authorize the Iranian regime, it would have zero legitimacy. You cannot authorize a regime that initiates physical force a rights violating country, a government that doesn't respect individual rights is a criminal gang. The Iranian theocracy is the worst kind of criminal gang, one united by a mystical philosophy that speaks to ghosts that they imagine dwell in an unperceivable place and get their orders from documents written by camel herders. When you look at it that way and you say, here are these ignorant, medieval, life-hating mystics who are training people to kill those who do love life and those who do produce, it puts a rather different spin on it than to say, well, the Arabs pushed at Israel, but Israel pushed at the Arabs, and maybe the Arabs have gone a little bit too brutal here, but they've got a just complaint. They have no just complaint. The envy of all Palestinians are those who live in Israel. Their standard of living, their freedom, their happiness is 10 times that which it is in the regime of the Palestinians. Israel guarantees all rights to all its citizens, including the Palestinians. So it's completely one side. There's a right and a wrong, and it's black and white.